Hello everybody. So today I'm going to show you how I go about editing a chapter of an audiobook. Now the I've, I've already, uh, well as you can see I have a finished chapter here, so I've already edited this. So I'm just going to go ahead and undo all my edits here. Okay, so the first thing that I, uh, that I do is uh, when I'm recording I mark all of my mistakes. I just make a clicking noise, just a and uh, that marks gives me a very recognizable visual marker uh, that I can then uh, for the for the first step of editing I can edit out all my mistakes just zero in on them and edit them out uh, two clicks for a mistake one click for a spacing issue like um, too much space between sentences too much space between words maybe I was reading ahead to figure out who's talking, what character's talking, or um, maybe I'm looking up how to pronounce a word, something like that, and I, I let the, uh, the audio continue to uh, be recorded. So uh, that's, that's the uh, first step. So mark all your mistakes and then edit them all out. And there. Just edit them all out. Now, from here, um, what I do is I do some uh, do a little bit of processing. So let's take a look at the processing that I do. Uh, that'll help me with my next step. Um, so the the I, I apply a chain, uh, audacity chain, and that consists of a high pass filter uh, at eighty hertz. It's a, in the shallowest slope that they offer, six dB uh, per octave roll off. Uh, 80 hertz is generally going to be good unless you want like a lot of rumble in your voice if you have a lower voice. Um, but for, for most voices, 80 hertz is, is, is a good uh, place to put your high pass filter. Uh, I do a low pass filter at 18 kilohertz because uh, that's the edge of what my mic will pick up. Anything above that is prop probably just useless noise. And I do a, a steeper roll off on that, 12 dB per octave. Uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna export to MP3, MP3 already does uh, a lot of this. It does chop off the ends of the uh, spectrum on its own. But you know, go ahead and handle uh, handle some of this yourself. Uh, EQ, uh, I do a deesser. Let's see here. Yeah, I do I do this uh, deesser curve uh, that I. Um, put together it's based on where the, the, the frequencies and my S's are, where I'm sibilant. And this does a good job of targeting uh, my S's, even though even though it, it does, uh, obviously it is applied to the whole track, which uh, could be considered a problem. Uh, there, there is cause to use a standalone DSer that targets just S's, but uh, that's what I use. So... Uh, and then I just, uh, the final step is just normalizing to 0 dB. You you could normalize to negative 3 dB, and that's another good spot, but I just go ahead and make it as loud as possible. Uh, so that's that's the chain that I use. It's pretty simple. Uh, the the microphone I, I, I use is already uh, voiced for voice. It's already uh, made to uh, emphasize the frequencies that I'd want to emphasize, emphasize anyway, so I don't do a lot of EQ, just a little bit to handle the S's, because this is somewhat of a sibilant, sibilant mic. It can be a little bit harsh. Uh, and that's not good, particularly for long-form narration. So, from there, uh, zoom in on the waveform, just clicking over here, just zoom in and zoom out. And... Um, and so there are two ways of doing this. The way I do it is I just, I, I look, um, okay, so I just roll on through the waveform here. Like here, I might do a high pass filter at 150 hertz, just to knock that down a bit. Um, here, let's see. Well, I'm not seeing, well, here I'd go ahead and delete this and just copy and paste some 
clean room tone in there. But the idea, yeah, like here, don't want any of that in my audio. So the idea is having a, a clean noise floor, a clean room tone uh, when you're not talking. And this can take some time, so what you might want to do is if you have a nice, quiet noise floor, um, what you might want to do is go ahead and just gate, uh, gate this audio and then uh, place another track below it of um, clean room tone. So you record your room for a significant amount of time, make sure it's nice and quiet, um, negative 50 dB, negative 60 dB, somewhere around there will uh, uh, probably be sufficient, sufficiently quiet. And then uh, uh, just copy and paste that uh, in a track underneath your main track and you'll have nice clean room tone when you're not talking. The reason why you want it quiet is because when you are talking it'll be doubled up. Uh, uh, but when you're not talking it'll be nice and quiet. So that's the second step is handle your noise floor. Make sure it's, uh, it's uh, good to go. Nothing distracting in it. Well, let's go ahead and do that. And then from here Looks like I had to handle a few things before I compressed the audio. Uh, this helps with uh, with fatigue, get a more consistent uh, experience for the listener. Important for long form narration. So what I do is I just compare it to uh, a reference chapter. So uh, I pretty much got it spot on when I was uh, with my first try, but if I didn't, I'd uh, go ahead and fix that, but I just uh, you want to you want to always compare when doing something like an audio book. You always want to compare it to uh, a, a, a reference, uh, so you're not just comparing it to the last audio that you recorded, because uh, then things can get out of whack uh, later on. So always always have a reference chapter or reference file to uh, compare to when compressing. And uh, one thing that I do when comparing is I is I make sure to try to make them the same length. So I'm comparing the same lengths of audio. Okay, so that's the uh, the third step that I do is compressing my audio. I could do it before when I uh, bef before I go through the noise uh, noise floor, go through the room tone, uh, but I uh, I decided to do it after here, and it, it really doesn't matter. Uh, so after that, am I done? No, I'm not done. Uh, I from after I compress, uh, I then listen to the chapter uh, in its entirety, and uh, as I come across things like um, mouth clicks or um, maybe parts thing things in the room tone that I might have missed or. Uh, just various let's let's see here reduce ill feeling yeah so this was a little a little click ill that i went ahead and uh did a low pass filter at i did a low pass filter at uh 2k 2 kilohertz to uh help attenuate that so reduce ill feeling so uh it's ill feeling reduce ill feeling goes from that ill feeling that uh, two kilohertz will is safe but it won't always completely remove the uh, sound one kilohertz low pass filter at 6 dB roll off uh, 6 dB an octave roll off will uh, generally take care of any mouth clicks uh, but it might affect the audio around it and one uh, very important thing when uh, when doing this is uh, is try to, uh, I use a keyboard shortcut, I hit Z, and that uh, centers the uh, selection at zero. And that's important, because uh, if I don't center selection at zero, then uh, the audio can, can sound uh, weird. You might be able to get a, get a click or some other uh, artifact of, of the editing that you do not want. So you do want to center the edges of your selection. 
and you can do that with the keyboard shortcut. So uh, I use Z to center, and then I, I also have X to delete audio because you know, I want to be able to do as little movement as possible when I'm editing, uh, make things as quick as possible by not having to move my hand all over the keyboard. Uh, so that's this step just listen through it and one thing that's that's particularly good about listening uh, to the audio uh, in its entirety is I get to catch spacing issues that, that, I, that I might have missed I get to catch all those mouth sounds I get to catch things in the room tone that I might have missed when visually editing it's just sort of a catch-all for everything and also when I'm listening I go ahead and uh, uh, for characters, I, I uh, new characters, I create reference files. I go ahead and copy and paste them into, or I could just export them from here, but I, I copy and paste them into a new uh, Audacity window and then export them as a, as a reference file. So whenever I come across that character again in the future, I have a reference to go back to and hopefully can sound like that character again. Um, so... Just take you take you through that and listening to it, just making all sorts of edits. Making a lot of edits to make. And that's that. I now have a completely finished chapter. And the last the final um the final step that I do is uh just at the beginning I started at half second after the chapter is introduced, so Powder and Arms. After the uh, chapter is introduced, I do 2.5 seconds, and then at the end, uh, well, 2.5 seconds, uh, and then the uh, starting of the chapter, and then at the end, uh, I do 3.5 seconds. So that's just uh, the final thing that I do is I get that that uh, that final uh, spacing right, and that's that. So there you have it. I hope this uh, hope this helped. Hope you uh, hope you learned a few things that'll come in handy, save you some time, and uh, help you produce good audio. So I hope you have a good day, good morning, good evening, good night, whatever it may be in your part of the world. So goodbye. <laughs>